Hello, this is going to be a response to an email I received from a viewer who was asking me why I collect math books. And I started to write a reply, but instead I'm going to make this video and email them this video. So this will be their reply. So first let me just say I've collected things for a very long time. When I was a kid, I collected coins starting at the age of 10. And I collected comic books. And then after that, I collected Magic the Gathering cards. And now math books. And out of all of the collectibles out there, out of all of the things that a person who is a collector can collect, I think that math books are unique in the sense that they are a collectible that gives you knowledge. So for example, here I have a book is a fairly rare book. It's called Analytic Geometry by V. A. Ilyin and E. G. Posniak. Mere Publishers Moscow. The book is pretty rare because it was published by Mere Publishers, which I don't believe exists anymore. I don't know much about them. Here it tells you a little bit about the publishing company. It says Mere Publishers of Moscow publishes scientific and technical literature in 19 languages, including all those most widely used. It translates text into Russian, and from Russian originals produces books in the following languages, English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Czech, Slovak, Finnish, Hungarian, Mongolian, Arabic, Persian, Hindi, Tamil, Kannada, Vietnamese, and Dari. Wow, so they are spreading knowledge throughout the world, or at least they were. I, I don't know if they're still in existence. So this is a collectible, right? This is a collectible. Wow, wow, look at that. I just, I just got to smell it. This is in really good condition. Just, oh. And this is a geometry book, right? This is a really hardcore geometry book. You can see some of the topics. So in my view, this is an example of a collector's book. And it's a book that you can pick up and you can read and learn math from. Right? I think that's, that's really big. As illustrations, the explanations in these books by mere publishers tend to be a little bit different than the explanations uh, in a lot of other books. That's why I like them. Also, again, as a collector, they are rare. So yeah, that's one of my books. So that's one reason I collect math books. It's because you know you can get knowledge from the collectible. And another reason I collect math books is that I'm a collector, right? I am a collector. I always have been. And so I have that like collecting gene. You know, I really, I would love to collect more things, but collecting costs money. So I've always been a budget level collector. I'm not one of the people who has like, you know, the rarest things um, that takes takes a lot of money. This book here, since I have them out here, is called Analysis One and it was written by Terence Tao. So that man is a genius. And as a collector, this is a book that I thought I should have. I knew someone who read most of this book. I've read small portions of this book. I have not read the whole book. I've only looked at certain sections and stuff like that. I'm not saying I've read the entire book. But I know someone who worked through more of the book than myself, and he was able to learn a lot of mathematics uh, because of this book. So I think that's a success. It's a solid math book on analysis, right? It's got good examples, good definitions, good exercises. Um, you know, it's a solid book. Solid book by a legendary, still living uh, mathematician, right? Who won the Fields Medal? Yeah, Terence Tao. Good book for beginners who want to learn analysis. Although if you're learning, if you're trying to learn analysis, I do recommend getting more than one book. There's other really, really good books. Um, Understanding Analysis uh, by Stephen Abbott is pretty good. Uh, also the book on analysis by Ross is an excellent choice. So yeah, and, th and there's other good ones. I always recommend um, Advanced Calculus by Fitzpatrick. So yeah, collecting math books. Here's another collectible, I think. So I wanted to include books here that I feel are collectibles. That's why you see these three books. I thought if I'm gonna talk about why I collect, I should pick three different books. So like this one is collectible because, you know, it's from mere publishers. This one, it was written by by Terence Tao. So that in my view already automatically it makes it a book worth owning. And this one, well, let's just open it up and then you can decide. So I saved the best for last. This book is really interesting. It's called Theory of Substitutions. It's by Neto. Okay. 
It's in fairly good condition. I'm pretty sure this is somewhat expensive. Now, when I say expensive, um, you have to understand everyone's definition of expensive is different. I'm, I'm talking, I mean, I'm pretty cheap. You know, $30 is like, ah, you know, I, I don't, I try, I have a lot of books and it's because I, I bargain shop and I've been collecting for a long time. Look at that, 1892, University of Southern California. And here's, here's some people checked it out. Look at that. That's so cool. That's history. To me, that makes a book even more. I love X library books. It's just like, there's a certain thing about it being X library that is special to me. You know, someone sat in a library and I just got to give it a whiff. Oh, someone sat in a library and, you know, or checked it out and other people in the world use this book. I'm going to be very careful with my copy of this book because I'm pretty sure it's kind of valuable. I'm just going to set this. There we go. Theory of Substitutions and Applications to Algebra. Ugin Neto. Cool. It's a really old book. And yeah, did I miss the copyright? Nope. I think I did. No, not yet. So it says 1892 there on the stamp. So let's see if we can find. Here we go. Yeah, 1892. Translator's note. The translator has confined himself almost exclusively. Hard to read. There we go. To the function of rendering the German into respectable English. My my thanks are especially due to the Register Publishing Company for their generous assumption of the expense of publication and to Mr. C. N. Jones of Milwaukee for valuable assistance while the book was passing through the press. Ann Arbor, F. N. Cole, February 27th, 1892. Wow, wow, right? Over here it's also signed 1892, Geeson. Interesting. So the contents of this book are really amazing because you're gonna find things in this book that you won't find in any math class that you can take, I think. I mean, it's just, I haven't seen stuff like this like all of this in one place in a single course in let's say college. I'm going to zoom in here so I can hopefully get better quality. There we go. So table of contents. So that's part one. And then chapter one, the symmetric and single valued functions. We're going to read a little bit of the beginning so you can kind of get an idea of the difficulty level of this book. Um, this is a pretty advanced book. Like most people would have a hard time, um, I think, reading this book and learning from this book. Um, like just most people in general. Um, obviously, if you know some math and you have a higher level of mathematical maturity, then then you can read a book like this. Certain sections are uh, easier to understand than others. I've looked at bits and pieces of this book. It's got all kinds of weird topics, as you can see. Things that you might not know about. The cyclotomic equations, the abelian equations, the algebraic solution of equations, the group of an algebraic equation. Yeah, let's look at the let's look at the first part in chapter. Let's read it together so you can see kind of how the book flows. It's a very rigorous book, but again, as a collector, you know it's it's cool to have it. And you can sit down and read two or three pages, and you'll learn something which I think is worth it. Theory of substitutions and of the integral functions, chapter one: symmetric or single-valued functions, alternating and two-valued functions. It says. In the present investigations, we have to deal with n elements, x sub 1 through, looks like it says x sub n, which are to be regarded throughout as entirely independent quantities, unless the contrary is expressly stated. It is easy to construct integral functions of these elements which are unchanged in form when the x sub alphas are permuted or interchanged in any way. For example, so here we have some functions. Okay, we have three functions there, I believe. Yeah, because this one keeps going on the second line there. So yeah. Such functions are called symmetric functions. Okay, so we confine ourselves, unless otherwise noted, to um, to the case of integral functions. And then it gives you some other. It goes on here and keeps explaining. So that's the flavor of a book like this. It's a little bit, um, you know, harder than the other books, in my opinion. Some of the stuff is pretty easy. So yeah, interesting book. Theory of equations, all kinds of math that you've probably never seen so and that's one of the things that i like about collecting math books right um you you buy these books and sometimes you don't really know much about what's in the book and that's, that's what learning is about right you pick up a book on some topic it doesn't have to be math it could be physics it could be science biology um, i recently bought a book on uh, bees and I think it's really interesting. It's a book on bees, and I love it. And I'm I'm thinking about making a video <laughs> on the bee book for YouTube, but I'm not sure. I, maybe I should just do it. Um, but yeah, 
collecting math books um, is interesting. And then, you know, you start with math and then you start going to math and science. But I'm pretty picky when it comes to the science books. I will, um, you know, I, I collect math books, but like for science books, it's got to be really cool or really interesting. Also, I, have, I do have some computer science books. I like the classics there, you know, the, the ones that really change the field, um, stuff like that. So anyways, it is a dark obsession maybe. I don't know. Is it dark? It is an obsession though, and um, it's a good hobby. So do you collect math books? Um, it takes a lot of time and energy, and it takes, you know, it's a lifelong thing you can do, right, collecting math books. I want to know if you collect math books, you know, leave a comment. Um, and let me know why you collect math books. You think collecting math books is a good idea. You think it's a bad idea. I mean, it is bad because it is expensive. People see all the books I have and they always say, whoa, you know, how much would it cost to buy all those books? But you really got to put it in perspective that I've been buying books like my entire life, like for a long time. So I've been collecting for many, many years. Anyways, enough about collecting math books. I could talk about this all day, but you're still there and hopefully you are. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment. Until next time, good luck and take care.